poor health. We can bounce back from professional situations. But we cannot bounce back from death. Amen? Amen. But death could not hold our Lord and Savior down. Amen? Amen. I know that's the brother that I want to be with. Amen? Amen. singing like that. Amen? Amen. God gives us everything that we need. Uh, to my beautiful wife, God bless you. Thank you so much Amen. for loving me in spite of myself. Ooh, that's hard to kind of spit those words out. Amen? But you know, I know I got it good going on, right? But sometimes we get it going on so much we forget about those who love us and care for us and take care of us. To all of my family members in the house, my goodness. I got Wards and Garners and Davises and Dunns and Copelands and I don't, I'm scared to forget somebody. Castile over there. So I just thank God for my family. And I thank God for my church family. Amen? Amen. 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 I won't not be before you long. If you have your Bible, and I pray that you do, if you could turn to me in the Old Testament, toward the front, in the book of Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy. Matthew, no, no, that's New Testament. Get it right. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Yeah. 28th chapter. Starting at the first verse. The pages of turning books is music to a teacher's ears. Thank you, If you found it, say amen. amen. If you still look and say, hold on. Amen. I'll be reading from the New International Version, and it reads as such, beginning with the first verse. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high. Say high. High. Will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Say if. If. Yeah. If you obey the Lord your God, you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Sound familiar? Uh -huh. Let's skip down to verse number 12. Verse 12. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. Say all. Oh. Say all. Oh. Bless all the work of your hands. You will lend money to nations, but will borrow from none. Amen. Here's our key verse. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. Thank you. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Amen. 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 Let us all pray. Dear Lord, as I come before your people, Lord God, remove the arm. Get him out of the way, Lord God, and allow your Holy Spirit to minister to your children, Lord. 
Lord God, tell the Holy Spirit who to talk to, who to minister to, what situations to approach. Speak, Lord God, to every heart, to every mind, to every soul, to every person that's under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that's looking for a blessing from you, Lord God. You know the empty vessels, Lord God. Fill us up. Help us, Lord God, live this thing that we call life. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What I want you to do, look to your neighbor, find your neighbor, find your neighbor, and just you and your neighbor, okay? One person's going to be person A, and the other person's going to be person B, okay? One person is A, and the other one is B. We get, we ready? Okay? For person A, you're first. Person A, look at your neighbor, and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I can't hear you. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. P. Pip. P. Pip. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. P. Pip. Yeah. Now, person B. Person B, look at your neighbor. Person B, say neighbor. neighbor. What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. For a subject, P Pip. P P I P. P P I P. Of course, that stands for something. Your purpose perfected in Praise. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got it wrong. Your purpose perfected in pain. P-P-I-P. -P. Your purpose perfected in pain. Mm. About six years ago, before we were husband and wife, Coffee and I were going to Norfolk to pick up someone from Norfolk State to bring him back to help us at a debate tournament. Okay. We were both teachers at Warwick High School. So about six years ago, driving my red Ford Explorer, I already knew before I got on the road to go to Norfolk that the tires were bad. I knew it. I knew it. But I said, no, we can make it to Norfolk and back. So on the way to Norfolk, we're on the highway right around the Robin Hood Road exit. And then boom, 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 The tire went flat. And I was upset and I was embarrassed. I got this girl I'm trying to impress. She's next to me. And we're all the way in Norfolk. I don't want her dad to have to come pick us up. That's a no-no. So I said, you know, I played it cool. No big deal. We pull off the road across three or four lanes of interstate traffic. Pull off the road. And, you know, you know how you drive in one wheel. So we park. And so I get out the car being manly. And I walk around. I look at the tire. I said, Lord, what am I going to do? I don't know how to get this. And so she said, is everything okay? I said, yeah, baby, fine. I got it. No big deal. I got it. All along, I'm scared, right? So I go around to the back of the car because I know the spare is under the back of the truck. I have no idea how to get this spare down. So I'm looking at the spare. The spare is looking at me, and I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do next. So I'm trying my best to turn it and to move it. I'm reading the directions. Nothing made sense, okay? Out of nowhere comes this gentleman. He comes and... We have no idea who he is. I'm still kind of scared. I'm trying to play big for coffee. And then so the gentleman comes, helps me put the tire down. Thank you, gentlemen. He goes away. Now I have this jack. I have no idea how to use the jack. Now I've used the jack before, but not on this big truck. Big truck. I don't know how to use the jack on the big truck. What's your point, Garner? So, so, so I'm sitting there in the cold with this woman I'm trying to impress. It's like 1130 at night. I have to pick up someone still in Norfolk. I'm in Norfolk. Don't really know my way around Norfolk. So I call Deacon Washington and Deacon Sandiford. They get them out of their beds, get themselves together. I believe they went to go purchase a heavy-duty jack. And they came and they rescued us. So during the whole time, I tried to keep my cool. Coffee's keeping her cool. I don't know what she's thinking about me right now. You know, we're in the backseat in a blanket, the two of us trying to stay warm because, you know, the car is off. I said, Lord, just let me get through this. And, you know, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to do right. I'm going to do right. So... What's my point in all of this? I had to keep my head through the struggle, through the pain, through that situation, because last night I received a phone call at 11 o'clock p.m. from a former student. I'm about to get in the bed. My wife is getting in the bed. She's asleep. The baby's looking around. She's getting ready to go to sleep. I'm about to get in the bed. Mr. Garner, how are you? This is Isaiah. Hi, Isaiah. What you want? <laughs> Mr. Garner, um, you know, are you busy? No. What you want? My tire is, my car won't start. I need a jump. Okay, I said, no problem. 
I could have thought about all the bad and nasty things I wanted to say about this young man for not being responsible, for calling me at 11 o'clock at night. But then God said, remember when you were on the bottom? Mm -hmm. So tonight is your turn to be on the top. Uh -huh. huh, does that make sense? Yeah. If you look at verse number 13, it says what? The Lord will make you the head and not, not the tail. tail. Last night, I became the head in the exact same situation. Mm -hmm. So I went to Isaiah, jumped the car, everything was going good, car died. Jumped the car again, everything was going good, car died. We ascertained that the alternator is just messing up, it's draining his battery. He can't go anywhere, so I had to take him home. <coughs> now please understand, I have this much gas. I'm not going to talk about my wife that I drive her car. I have this much gas. So I have to leave Applebee's to go all the, all the way down to downtown Newport News at 11.30, 11.45 at night with this much gas to take this young man home and come all the way back downtown to Buck Row with this much gas. What's the point, Garner? What's the point? The point is that through my pain initially, God perfected my purpose. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Here the word says what? The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. At the time in your life where you're struggling and you need to call on others, God is perfecting you to do the exact same for someone else later on. huh? Amen. That's the purpose of our pain. Amen. God perfects what we have to do through our experiences and through our struggles. Sometimes we say, well, Lord, you know, I went through all this. Now I can tell somebody about what I went through. That's true. Uh -huh. But God wants us to be able to be the person to go to and mentor and encourage and motivate someone who went through exactly what we went through before. Amen. Now, 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 let's look at this. Here's my first point. The first point is the struggle you go through is your lesson. Sometimes we say, well, Lord, why is all this stuff happening to me? The money's funny. The change is strange. My body's hurt. I ain't got no job. They're not trying to give me a job. Yada, yada, yada. All that stuff.